Okay, this is lesson 5.3 on the slope intercept form. Uh, by now, you should know what you're going to need to take notes, but just in case, you need your notebook, a pencil, and for this particular lesson, you'll be making a graph or two, so you're going to need a ruler. I love this chapter. All right, today you're going to write and graph linear equations using the slope intercept form. So go ahead and set your notes up. And I would like you to take Cornell notes on these, on this lesson. So set it up like this. Remember to put the lesson up here in the upper left hand corner and label it slope intercept form. Put a page number. And then remember to update your table of contents. Table of contents. Don't write TOC at the top. Go back to the front of your notebook and update your table of contents. The essential question will come from the learning target. Write and graph linear equations using the slope intercept form. So your essential question should be, how do you write and graph And you can finish it using the learning target. So if you need to hit pause, go ahead, but I'm going to move on. All right, the first thing you should write down in your notes is the slope intercept form, and that is this y equals mx plus b. It's an equation that represents a line, and it's a particular form of a line that involves the slope and the y intercept. That's why it's called the slope intercept form. So you should label each part. The letter M in this equation represents the rate of change or the slope. So on your paper, make sure you draw a little arrow and write rate of change or slope. The letter B in blue here represents the beginning point or the y-intercept. The y-intercept is just the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And we'll look at that some more in just a second y equals mx plus b is the slope intercept form. So let's do a couple problems that involve the slope intercept form. Here's problem number one. Again, you should write down problem one in your notes. And for now, you can just copy the equation. y equals 5x minus 2. Your only job in this problem is to identify what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. Well, as you just wrote down, and you don't have to write this part, you just wrote y equals mx plus b. What's the m in this equation? Well, the m is just the number next to the letter x. So your answer should be m equals 5. The slope is 5. And what's the B? The B is just the constant at the end. Now, you notice I'm circling 2, but really, I should be circling the minus 2. So the y-intercept, or the B, or the beginning point is negative 2. That's it. The equation y equals 5x minus 2. The slope is represented by the number 5, and the y-intercept is negative 2. Piece of cake. Here's the next question, problem number two. Now you're just going to do the opposite of what we did in problem one. Instead of giving you an equation and asking you to identify the slope and y-intercept, this problem just says, what's the equation? Or write an equation that involves a slope of negative four-fifths and a y-intercept of seven. So when you come across a problem like this in your book, and it says slope is and y-intercept is, you should get in the habit of using the letters that go with it. So for this problem, I'm going to write on my paper m, which is the slope, equals negative four-fifths. And b, which is the beginning point or the y-intercept, equals seven. So the equation that uses a slope of negative four-fifths and a y-intercept of seven would be y equals mx plus b, and in place of m, I'm going to replace it with negative four-fifths. So y equals negative four-fifths x plus, and in place of b, I'm going to put seven. That's my equation. 
and that's it. Now, just to be clear, and you don't have to write this in your notes, if I have an align like the blue line shown, this line has a slope, and I can figure out what the slope is by picking two points on the line, like this one and this one. And I can calculate the slope by figuring out the rise and the run. This particular line has a rise of 1, or positive 1, because you go up 1. And it has a run of 1, 2, 3, 3, positive 3, because I'm moving to the right. So my slope is 1 third. The line also crosses the y-axis. Remember, this is the y-axis. And where it crosses the y-axis is up 1, 2, right there. 2. So the beginning point, or the y-intercept, is 2. So if I give you an example like this one, problem 3. Again, you should write this in your notebook, problem 3. And it asks you, what's the equation that's represented by the line on the graph? All you have to do is figure out what the m is, or the slope, and what the b is, or the y-intercept. So you look at the graph. First of all, you can identify where the line crosses the y-axis. This is the y-axis. You go down on the y-axis to this point. And where is that point? It's at negative 2. So the beginning point is negative 2. Then you can identify the slope by picking a second point, like this one. And you calculate the slope by finding the rise and the run. So for this line, I go up 2 and over 1. Up 2, over 1. So my slope is also equal to 2. To write an equation, I have an m and a b. I just write out y equals m x plus b. And in this case, b is negative 2. Now this answer is OK, and you can leave it like that, adding a negative number. But you could also write it like this, y equals 2x. Adding a negative 2 is the same as subtract 2. Either one of those answers is correct. All right, the last example that I'm going to show you is problem 5. And it just says, what is the graph of y equals 2x minus 1? So for this problem, you're going to have to make a coordinate grid, a graph, and you're going to have to graph this equation. That's really two steps. The first step is to identify the key parts of the equation. And the second step is to put those parts on a graph. So when you look at y equals 2x minus 1, you should be saying to yourself y equals mx plus b. And if y equals mx plus b, then for this problem, the m is 2. And the m is the slope. So anytime I write a slope and I'm trying to graph it, really want it as a fraction. So I'm going to write 2 as 2 over 1, because that's how you write a whole number as a fraction. You put it over 1. A b, the beginning point, or the y-intercept, in this case, is negative 1. So I've identified the key parts of the equation, the slope and the y-intercept, and now I'm going to graph it. Whenever you graph an equation of a line using the slope-intercept form, you always want to start with the B. The B represents the beginning point. That's where you're going to begin. So you begin with the beginning point, which is negative 1. And again, that's the y-intercept. Find the y-axis. Move down on the y-axis to negative 1. Negative 1. There's my first point. Now, I'm going to move from this first point using the slope. And the slope tells me that I'm going to rise 2 and I'm going to run 1. 
So from the beginning point at negative 1, I'm going to rise 2, 1, 2, and I'm going to run 1, 1. There's the next point on my line. Now you could make a line through two points, but to make a really good line, you're going to need three or four points. So from this point, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to rise 2, 1, 2, and run 1. There's a third point. Rise 2, 1, 2, and run 1, 1. So the line represented by the equation y equals 2x minus 1 looks like this. So take your ruler and draw through those points, and that's it. So quick review. A slope-intercept form of an equation is y equals mx plus b. The m is the slope or the rate of change. The b is the beginning point. When you're given an equation, you just identify the slope and the y-intercept by looking for the m and the b in the equation. If you're given the slope and y-intercept, you can write them out and then write the equation using the form. If I give you a graph, all you have to do is identify the beginning point and the slope from the graph. And then if I give you an equation and ask you to graph it, you just identify the slope and y-intercept and put those parts on the graph. That's it for notes. Come to class tomorrow ready for your assignment.